Hey again everyone. I've been reluctant to make this video because it's one of those ones that's going to take me forever to put together, but will only get a handful of views because of the niche topic and even fewer full views. This kind of video, while informative, actually kind of harms the channel when it comes to exposure in the YouTube algorithm. That's something that I really can't do anything about, so it's really discouraged me from making more content for the platform. If it takes me multiple times longer to make the video than it accumulates in viewing time, it's a little demoralizing. An alternate explanation is that the videos are useless and terribly made, but I don't think that's really the case. They're mediocre at worst and I'm fine with that. The only thing I can really do to work around that is ask that if you find the videos helpful, to like them and to try to let them run all the way through. With this type of content, people typically switch off once they think they've gotten the information that they're looking for. We're nerds, it's how we work. Move fast, break things, etc. I get it. But the YouTube algorithm doesn't. So, if you want to see more of these types of videos, do the youtube -y things and try to share the videos on boards or Reddit or wherever if they're appropriate. Alright, with that out of the way, let me get into the main topic today. A look at text cleaners and how they could be impacting the quality of your TTS models. I'm going to try my best to generalize this discussion because pretty well all the training scripts and frameworks that I've seen for training TTS models incorporate some sort of text cleaner, and many of them seem to use the same cleaners, those from Tacotron, I believe. So what is a text cleaner? It's just a term that's used to generally describe a function or process that's used to alter text using some sort of rule or set of rules, often using regular expressions. Again, and I'm generalizing here, the text cleaners operate between the input text and the phonemizer or tokenizer in most of the TTS training scripts. Many scripts use the same cleaners for the input text at inference time and the text fed to the tokenizer and tokenized during the training process, which makes sense, as using different cleaners could result in the same text being tokenized in different ways due to how it's being altered before hitting the tokenizer. For this video, the specific cleaners and code I'll be looking at are the cleaners used in the MRQ fork of the Tortoise TTS code in the AI voice cloning web UI, and the trainers used in Koki TTS for training the VITS and your TTS models. The examples given and the specific code I'll be looking at will only really be appropriate for English, and I'll get into some specific reasons why as I go on. For languages other than English, it's probably even more important to use an appropriate set of cleaners and or a perfectly clean data set. You won't be able to rely on the fairly robust set of English cleaners already in place, and attempting to do so will just make a mess of your data set as it's being tokenized. But the errors introduced by using inappropriate text cleaners will be silent or invisible. It won't really be apparent that your text is being altered before it's being tokenized, and that your text no longer accurately matches the audio file transcripts that it's supposed to be paired with. This can be a big problem and can make a mess of your model very quickly with it being unclear why. I'm not a Python whiz by any means, but this stuff is pretty simple, and you should be able to brute force your way through developing rules for your text with a bare minimum of Python knowledge. I'm mostly ignoring phonemizers here. Those are separate packages that convert text to a representation of speech sounds. Many TTS models can be trained using raw text input or using phonemized text input. In the training code that I've looked at, phonemizers are typically used after the text cleaners, so things here can apply even if you're going to be using a phonemizer like eSpeak. These phonemizers operate on their own set of rules, which are much more elaborate than the simple set of text cleaners. However, each language needs its own complex rule set for mapping characters to speech sounds, and as it stands, many languages, but not all, have some degree of support. But using a phonemizer that may be altering your text and turning it into speech sounds in an unusual or incorrect way could also introduce errors into the model if you're attempting to use poorly supported language. Check the documentation for the phonemizer and try to figure out the nuances of how the language is supported if you're having difficulty. The text cleaners for Koki TTS are found in cleaners.py located in the TTS uppercase TTS lowercase, utils slash text directory. They're becoming increasingly elaborate and there are rules in place for many languages now. Let's take a look at some of the cleaners and the functions within and explore how they may affect your text input. 
The basic cleaners are what you should probably use if you have a perfectly clean data set. The basic cleaners are two functions, convert text to lowercase and remove white space. These are the minimal set of alterations needed before you turn your text into tokens. Now I mentioned using this if you have a perfectly clean data set. What I mean by that is that all your transcriptions perfectly match your audio clips and that all non-ASCII characters are removed. All extra characters such as ampersands are translated into English equivalents and all digits are transcribed and removed. The text cleaners for the Tortoise AI voice cloning web UI are found in two places. The tokenizer.py file found in modules, Tortoise TTS, Tortoise Utils, and the voice tokenizer.py file found in modules, DLAS, DLAS, data, audio. The Tortoise code is a little less stable and refined than that of Kogi, so I won't be focusing on it too much for examples. However, much of it is similar, if not the same, as that used in Koki. There is some language handling with the tortoise code. If the tokenizer is loaded the language code JA in the JSON file, it will trigger the code for the Japanese text and transliteration. If you choose to alter the cleaners in tortoise, you're sort of on your own, as there may be hard-coded calls to the English cleaners buried somewhere in the code. I think one occurrence is in the paired voice audio dataset.py file, but I'm not sure if the function is actually used here. To save repeating myself, I'll use Koki for most of the examples going forward, but many of the text cleaning functions are fundamentally the same. Most people using Koki to train a VITS or your TTS model are probably relying on the English cleaners, which can be quite aggressive depending on your dataset. I'll try to illustrate how the English cleaners can affect text with some examples that are typical output from OpenAI's Whisper or are less often found in some of the open source datasets out there. After converting text to lowercase, the English cleaners run a handful of other functions. Some have more potential to cause issues than others. The expand time English function is defined in the time underscore norm dot py script in the English subdirectory. I'm not going to go through the function in detail but it takes the time in digits and translates it into text. In doing so, if a zero is found, it replaces it with the sound O instead. And if in military time, it translates it into standard format with AM or PM. For the most part, this isn't a problem. However, if the times in your dataset are actually said as 13.05 for 1.05 PM, using these cleaners to expand digit times into words will cause errors the audio file and the clean text being input to the trainer will no longer match. Now this one is going to be an uncommon outlier edge case situation, but depending on your data source it could be a problem. The digit expansion code in Koki is borrowed from Talkatron according to the notes. It's pretty robust, but Whisper does some funky things when it generates transcriptions that could cause errors when transcribing digits. Whisper doesn't translate audio literally as in you aren't necessarily getting a word accurate transcript of your audio file even though it might seem like you are. The example that always comes to mind is having Whisper translate the phrase I gave him a hundred bucks. Whisper will translate this as I gave him dollar sign one zero zero which is well logically correct but it's not what I said. Similarly the phrase I gave him one hundred dollars and I gave him a hundred dollars will also be transcribed as I gave him dollar sign one zero zero. So we have a hundred bucks, one hundred bucks, a hundred dollars, and one hundred dollars. All of these are vastly differing pronunciations, but will all be transcribed as the same thing. So the number cleaners will translate the digits dollar sign one zero zero to one hundred dollars when training or running inference on text. Unless the speaker actually said $100, there's going to be a discrepancy between the input text after it's been run through the cleaners and the input audio. Now this is just my opinion, so take it with a grain of salt, but I suggest removing all the samples with any digits from your dataset unless you want to transcribe them by hand and verify the pronunciation as you go through by listening to the audio samples, especially if you're using Whisper to do any of your transcriptions. With Whisper's casual way of transcribing, there are just too many different ways that the same digits can be said, and the text transcript doesn't provide enough context to be able to expand the digits. The expand abbreviations code does a simple case-insensitive find and replace on a small handful of character combinations. 
Most of these have only one common occurrence in English, but could cause some issues. For example, MS is Miss, MRS is Mrs, MR is Mr, and that's all fine. DR is Doctor, but DR is also Drive when considering an address. ST is Saint, but also Street, again, when considering an address. A less common edge case scenario is the abbreviation CO as a stand-in for company, particularly used in names. Whisper will transcribe spoken occurrences as CO, but if you're going in the other direction and you're trying to automatically replace occurrences of CO in your text with company, it'll often be incorrect. CO, spoken in the abbreviated form, is fairly common, perhaps even more common than saying the expanded form in a company name or title. The simple replacement function in Koki has some handling for other languages, and in English there isn't much to do other than replace ampersands with the word and. This and the remove aux symbols are probably pretty safe to apply on any input text. Now that's definitely not a full list of the problems you could encounter with text cleaners. If you're trying to build a high quality stable model, you will need to peek at the code and learn how the text cleaners may be altering your input text and change things to fit your needs. If you're using Whisper to do bulk transcriptions, there are a few other things you may want to watch out for. Traditionally, or sometimes hyphenated words like email could also be a problem. Email when hyphenated is said as it is read. Without the hyphen, it'll likely become mail, as there are far more occurrences of m being said together in the English language. So the model will pick up on the most common pronunciations in the data set. To resolve this, you'll need to figure out what hyphenated words are in your data set and edit the text accordingly. Other things to consider are transcriptions such as the United States into the characters US. When converted to lowercase, this just becomes us, which is really undifferentiable from other occurrences of us, unless you're considering the surrounding characters. If you only have a few short samples and occurrences in your data set, you may train in some mispronunciations. The abbreviation for United States may also be written as U period S period, which when tokenized and the punctuation removed becomes U space S. This is likely the correct way for it to be done, but depending on how punctuation is removed and when you're collapsing white space, you could collapse the word back into us. So double check your chain of text cleaners and how they're processing your text if you run into any stubborn issues. When using Whisper or any other unclean text input, there are a couple other common things you might run into. Whisper does an excellent job of transcribing domain names when read out. You'll need to undo all of that magic in your data set. Google.com isn't tokenized as Google.com. The period is stripped out and it becomes Google.com, with the mismatching audio sample still saying Google.com. Abbreviations like FBI are converted to lowercase and will become something like FIBI to the model. CIA becomes CIA rather than CIA. Some abbreviations like NATO are set as they're written, and some capitalized company names are similarly set as they're written like IKEA. There are also abbreviations that are spoken in hyphenated form. The Medical College Admittance Test, for example, is abbreviated to MCAT. However, when someone is discussing it, they'll typically speak the abbreviation as MCAT. So unless there's an elaborate dictionary with some context awareness being used, I don't really know how you could accurately transcribe abbreviations back into text reliably. And unless you're doing this on an industrial scale, I don't think it really makes sense to try to do this automatically. My workaround for this is a convoluted regular expression that I use in a Python script to flag the lines in my dataset with a series of asterisks. I then open the file in Notepad++, search for the asterisks, and manually correct each line. It's faster than it sounds and the results are worth the effort. Using AI generated transcripts is going to save you a ton of time but may introduce a series of silent errors if you feed them blindly into your model. You'll probably still be able to train a decent model but you'll end up with some strange misspeakings or the emergence of an inappropriate or inconsistent accent. I'll link my terrible unfinished but still useful dataset markup script in the description if anyone wants to use it as a base for making their own. Hopefully this video can help out anyone who might be struggling with persistent mispronunciations in their TTS models. Thanks for watching.